Here we go, here we go. Bright, shiny blue morning. Wonderful. Finally, autumn is here, October the 20th. <laughs> this is my season. This is it. This is if, if we could if I could freeze it at one one day, one temperature for the year, this is where I would freeze it. Right there. Blue sky, not a cloud in sight. Cool, not cold. Nippy, is that the word? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning. Okay, ah, this is not today's work. This is something I was doing last night. We'll be getting to this real soon now. RSN, real soon now. Usually, we've got a blue cloth here for the block. We put the block on this blue cloth so that it can slide around easily, not get damaged, not get scratched. Today, rather than the blue cloth, I'm going to put down a non-slip cloth. Those of you who have seen these streams before, that should tell you what you need to know. What am I doing this morning? <laughs> No, 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 no. When I'm hammering that thing, I gotta slide that thing all over the place. If I'm hammering, I'm gonna have the bench peg in here. Vivid KP has got it close. Close. Not testing. We're going to do color separations. So I need to print. So when you need to print, you don't want the block sliding around. So it's a non slip for printing days and a slippy one for sliding days. Proofing for color separation while well, doing a color separation. I've only got one blank piece of wood here today, so we're just going to do one. There are going to be four of these for the blue, but three more for the blue, but I'm going to just do one. I prepared yesterday a bunch of sheets of paper of our patented, not really patented, of our patented Gumpy on backing sheet paper. And we're going to print this thing and transfer it to another block. Paper out, including yours for today. Well, there's mine. Paper out, yes, there's one pack upstairs. It's Dei Chan today. And she's printing. Actually, I can't tell you what she's printing. I'm not, it's. Ethically, I can't tell you what she's printing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's pretend she's printing some some of the November prints. Let's pretend that's what's happening. It's a lie. Lei Chan's up there printing the November subscription prints. Tokaido tomfoolery. Maybe. People need to know. You will know what you need to know when you know. I can tell you one thing though. Normally, when we're talking about next year's series, right? We've, we've been teasing it and playing with the idea of next year's series. Normally, the announcement of each year's series happens in late or mid late December when I put up the the I, I stand at the desk and I do the year's update video showing the prints we've just finished, chatting about what we've done, showing some financial charts, and then I announce next year's series. It's not going to be like that this year. Next year's series is going to have its formal announcement sometime in the next couple of weeks. In October, we will actually be announcing, here it is, there's the web page, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do this in October. And the reason I need to do that is because next year's series is going to have a massive series of YouTube videos, like we did with The Great Wave. There was 17 or something videos for The Great Wave. I don't know how many this is going to have, but this is going to have a number of, of videos with it. So we've got to get started with the videos at the preparation stage. So rather than keep everything secret, we're just going to get the first video ready, make the announcement of the series sometime, probably around the end of this month. 
Is the mic too loud? I don't know. The mic is right here. It's plugged into a Roland interface. I'm looking at green, 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 green. I'm not seeing any orange or red. Any updates on the Neko Hake? Yes, the fourth print is being proofed, or it's out at a printer's workshop where he is supposedly going to proof it. It is moving forward, very slowly, but it is moving forward. Am I still printing the Great Wave? As we speak right now, the next batch of 60 is coming. Is Chihari-san is working on it. I spoke to her by phone yesterday afternoon. How's it coming? Because I'm a little nervous about the blocks and stuff. And she's like, I'm on this. So right now, 60 copies are coming. Sugusan did a batch. She did a batch before that. Now the blocks have gone back out to Nagano. Yeah, Evening Bell is the one. Evening Bell. How's my mom doing? Somebody's asking. Well, I, I'm not in touch with them every day. My brother is her, her main caretaker right now. My brother and my sister. Mom's in the nursing home. She's uh, uh, up and around. She's not bedridden or anything. She's okay. She's up and around, walking, eating meals normally, going out the park every day. She doesn't do the internet anymore. She can't handle the, the muscle control for the mouse, and she can't really concentrate on stuff like this. So my mother, unfortunately, is no longer part of these streams, but she's, she's hanging in and getting good care. It was fun having her on these streams and uh, having her in the background, but uh, it's just not something she can manage these days. I'm sorry. So. There's a lift of gumpy paper. That's how it ends up. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> this is not ink. The reason you're seeing black here, this is the toner, of course. Just getting rid of the last last vestiges of gumpy. How goes the quest for chili-free paper? I haven't done anything on it since I last reported to you. I just really haven't. Life, life is life, you know. None of that was a tease. It was all a legitim legitimate couple of experiments to see if that sort of a machine would be possible. I think now, after that experimentation, it is possible. How we then move ahead with trying actually building it is, is difficult. There's bits of paper now everywhere. So I'm saying, how do I get the channels cleaned out? There's not just, just throw some water on here. We're here, we're done. I could have taken it to the sink, but uh, up three floors. So we're done, I believe that's it. There might be little bits of paper stuck in here and there. We'll find out when we print it. How's my back? My back seems to be, I believe, pretty much back to normal. I'm, uh, I said I'm taking care of it. What do I mean taking care of it? I'm just being careful. I'm not lifting anything these days, of course. Early in the morning when things are still stiff, I get up carefully. I try and avoid getting that thing, you know. But the back is fine. I just got back from the pool this morning. I didn't do a full kilometer today. It's Thursday. I don't have time. I ran out of time. I did my 800 meters, a kilometer yesterday and the day before. Okay, let's do the thing. 
the thing with the pigment. I've brought down from upstairs. I went upstairs and I stole from Ayumi-san's desk some blue pigment. Rather than use black on here for the transfer, I didn't really want to stain the wood with the wrong color. The printers are going to be using it for blue, so I'm going to do the transfer with a blue as well. That's my washing brush. This is the printing brush. And what I need, I need a piece of junk paper. So just one of our, we were talking about transfers and stuff, getting ready for size, size and dimension. So I'll use the back of this for a first test. And then I have, as we said, the gumpy paper. I'm gonna go in there, make sure I get the right corner. And there is a, there's a risk factor here this morning. We've had rain, 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 rain. The last few days has been chilly and rainy. And when I made this paper, it was raining. So I glued this down, pasted it down. And this paper, whatever, it's paper. It expands and shrinks and expands and shrinks. So I made it and it's been sitting here in a wet environment. Now suddenly this morning it's all dry. So if I had kept this paper sealed up, after making it, it would have a certain moisture level. Bring it up right now, slap it on here, do the printing, and a few minutes later, as it gets today's weather, it'll dry. So I've been, uh, I opened it up here a while ago, and this paper has to dry out to the level of the room here. A print that's this wide, there would be, there will be appreciable amount of shrink on that paper just as it sits here on my desk. When you're playing with small prints, it's not such a factor, but as soon as you start to scale up like this, the dimensions of your transfer sheets become really, really important, and you can get in trouble real fast. And I speak from vivid experience. Vivid experience, if I can use that word on this in this stream. There's still bits and pieces left here. Let me get them out of here. There's my little poker. Back in Omi in the workshop, you know, where, where I did do or did my printing. Come winter, you know, it's cold. You can't do short sleeves. So I, I had those, what do you call it? Accountants have those things where they, they clip on your shirt cuffs so your cuffs don't drip into your ink and stuff like this. I don't remember. I don't know what they're called. I don't know. 
they're little clips that go around your, your uh, wrists so they stop your, your clothes from getting into ink and stuff. Okay, let's do this. This is not going to be a smooth, beautiful, glorious blue DC color. It's just going to show us where the things are. Use the back side of this sheet. Baron. It would help if I had a Baron. I do have a Baron. And I can't remember where it is. Of course, I can't remember where it is. Where are we here? one dry piece of wood. If we were sitting down here at the desk now to do some real printing, you know, if this was a stack of paper to do some real printing, it would take 10, 15, 20 minutes to get this block warmed up for printing. It is really dry. You'd have to sit here pouring water on it like this. Because otherwise it just it just dries out so quickly between sheets or even while you are rubbing one sheet it it'll dry out. You know. So you gotta let it drink, let the thing drink for a while. I think I remember when I did that print, the, the three hour session we did where I made a print start to finish, I was really concerned about that. I'd carved that block and then I really wanted the first print off the blocks to look good. So I think I remember on that stream, I sat there with Cameron and after the carving was finished, I moistened it and put pigment on and moistened it and put pigment on and I sat there chatting for like 10, 15 minutes and people were like, take a print, take a print, take a print. And I wanted that block to get good and stable before I did the first impression. Okay. Yeah, the phrase we were using, I can't remember. As long as you make sure it's, it's got enough to drink, the block will always cooperate. I forget the phrase we used there that day. Never work on a thirsty block. Make sure it's got enough to drink. Also, too, this brush is too small for this block. If we were doing this as an edition, if this is the actual printing, I would, I would get a brush, not double that size, but I would get one of the longer brushes. This, block, this brush is too small for a, a block of this size, with this much uh, intense printed area. You spend too much time going round and round and round and round and round, and the parts you haven't touched start to dry out. So this, this brush is very much too small for, for real printing on a block like this. All right, I think we're here. We're just going to take one impression anyway, so let's do this. Well, what I should maybe do, if it go, tell you what, if it goes well the first one, let's pull all three. I have one, two, three sheets of paper here. We're going to need three blue. We're going to need three blue blocks. So let's see. We've taken all this trouble to get the block warmed up. Let's see. Okay, let's do this thing. And 
As always, with a new block, a new print, you don't know where to rub because you haven't learned. There's no muscle memory yet about where the different parts of the impression are. Somewhere in the middle there, there's a piece of wood, right? Face comes down there, around the back of the head. Is that the way it was? Around her bum? Over at the bottom, there's the curl of the wave. This big wide area. I can't remember where it all is. Oops, put the baron on your pigment. Now quickly, before she dries out, keep going, keep going. Let's do two more. Printing this one as well, you know, we, uh, we used that expression the other day, separate the men from the boys. And this is going to be one hard work to do this print. This is not going to be a trivial and or easy print to make. It's going to be very hard work for somebody. Not sure about the price on it. I had been speculating we'll do it at the same price as the octopus print, but I wonder it might we might find that we've got a lot more spoiled copies. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And one more. Someone says, how many blocks? I'm really not sure still. We've got, for the blue, there's going to be four blues. There's the key block. And then there's the other little accessories. Her bikini is one color. Her lips are another color. The surfboard is going to take one, two, three, perhaps four. So the question of how many blocks and how many impressions, I think what you probably were asking there is how many impressions. Key, four blues, that's five. Bikini, lips, surfboard base, surfboard over, surfboard gradation. But we will be putting some of those on the same piece of wood. So the block count and the impression count will be, will be different. There's still bits of gumpy paper coming up out of here. I really should have taken it to the sink and washed it, whatever. Okay, after getting it all warmed up and ready for printing, we just got to put it away and let it dry.
The blue we're using here is just whatever was on the bench upstairs. I just grabbed whatever was at hand. I don't even know what this is. It looks like it's a mix. It started out as a eye blue lake, but there's some green in there. She must have dumped some yellow in. It's a bit teal color. You can see the greenish tinge here. I, this is no relation to what we're going to do in the print. Just I didn't want to use a, a color that was way different from what would be on the blocks. I have no idea what color we're going to use. We're, well, we're going to, I do have an idea. We're going to get close to the original copy. But, uh, okay, okay, okay. Now, now, now. We now come to our original here. And it's time for some decisions. Printing order, the outline will come first. In fact, this, this print, absolutely, the outline, the black outline will be printed first at normal printing time. Then the block you saw just now will go next because those together form the key. Everything else, the red bikini needs to fit inside the outline. The darker blue needs to fit exactly over the lighter blue. The surfboard has to fit into the outline. So at printing time, it'll be the two blocks we've already made. The key block will go on, the light gray, and then the block we just saw will go on. And then the paper will stabilize and everything else will key to those two colors. So this thing you just saw to here, this is kind of a key block for this print. But what I got to decide now is we've got level one blue. There's four levels all together which is this one. And now we've got to identify which are going to be level two. You can see, for example, here, level one, level two, level one, level two, one, two. That's two, I guess. That's one, two. That must be one. Is this two? I'm not quite sure. That's level three, then back to level Two or is that level one? It's level one. Not easy, not easy. Let's figure it out. And of course, I'm not going to trace everything here. I'm just going to identify which of these zones are going to be the level two zones. Clearly, it's going to be this one here. This is not going to be simple because some of them are kind of vague. So, as Vivid says, it's hard for me to see the differences. I'm glad I'm not colorblind here, but uh, some of them are obvious, but some of the middle here are not obvious at all.
that's it for there. Four, three, two, that's two as well. Four, three, three, two. Four, three, four. I think those are one. That piece right there is a two. That's one. That's one. That piece is a two. That's a three. That's a two. And these are all one except that's a three. I don't think we have any in the bottom here. This is one and three. There's no four there. That's three. This is one. That's four, that's three. I think we have it. So somebody says, I could have played with this in Photoshop. You're right. I didn't really think it was going to be so much of a problem, but uh, you're right. That's four, that's three. I could have done the separation in Photoshop, you know, click with the magic wand, I guess, but whatever. That's one. That's clearly two, that's four, that's three, that's three, that's three, that's three or four, not sure, that's two. Have I got it? No, look at that, dangerous. Comes down in there. We were talking before about the alternate way to do this, to do this as when I'm carving level two now, I could carve two, three, and four on this block. And then the next one, it would be three and four. Then the next block would be four. But that would be massively more carving, and we don't really need that, I think. We're going to go with a base for one. Then there will be one plus two, one plus three, darker pigment, and one plus four, darker pigment. So everything gets two. You know, in terms of the blue, everything will be printed twice. Printing it four times is asking too much, too much of the carvers and too much you know, stress on the paper to print some of that four times. So excuse me while I ignore you for a minute. I've just got to make sure I've got all these number two areas because if I skip one and miss one, it's no fun coming back to try and, uh, to try and do it. I can see one place where I've missed a line. This little white line here under her hair, I didn't get that. So we'll have to put that in later. In fact, maybe I could draw the location of it right now. Because it's only going to be block two, and then I got to bring it back to put it in block one. So let's do it. Let's cut it out on block two.
Okay, I think we're there. What about the line near her left cheek, Dave? The line near her left, her left cheek, this one. It's marked here as red. I will be leaving it. I will be cutting it, yes. I think we are okay. A uh, cheek, this cheek. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Her left cheek. It's, this is four and three. That's three. That's four. That's three. Three. That's four. That's four. That's three. That's three. That's two. We've got this one. I do believe we're okay. The twos come this far, and everything from here on in is a three and a four right round. So I don't think I have anything to do here near her uh, cheeks. I think we're okay. Now let's just fill in a bit more of this so that I can make sure I see it once it's uh, no, on the wood. Here's the vacuum cleaner lady out there in the hotel on her normal daily routine. upper right corner, as in where we're doing right now. There's something needs to be checked, upper right corner. That's two, that's one, that's one. I believe the corner itself is a number one. I'm seeing it as a one. Thanks for checking, thanks for asking. <clears throat> David said the last video was three months ago. When you, will you be back? Well, I can't give you a date, but uh, we're not ignoring YouTube. We're just working, working like crazy. The next YouTube video will be one of two things. It'll either be the next David's Choice about the Surimono albums, the one that I talked about before, or it quite possibly will be the, the video announcing and discussing the inception of next year's search subscription series, which I have to get done in a couple of weeks. So it'll be one of those two things. I'm really not trying to ignore YouTube. I would love to be sitting here every day thinking and planning and making the next YouTube video. If, you, if I could paint my own life right now, I can't because uh, of the managing job here, but if I could paint my own life right now, that's what I would be doing. It would just be every couple of weeks or maybe every month, I don't know, we'd have a real good, nice, rich YouTube video. Good afternoon, this is woodblock printmaker Dave Bull. Here at my workbench down on the first floor of our shop in Asakusa, Tokyo. Today's video, <laughs> that's what I would rather be doing, <clears throat> is the part on the other side of the line you drew also level two. Yes, I believe it is because coming over her hair, let's go back and check. That line splits, these are both level two. Thank you for checking. As, as many, if you've got any things you think I've missed, speak now. I think there is a two in the middle of the right side. <coughs> Someone says, I think there's a two in the middle of the right side edge. 
you're probably talking about this one, and I'm not so sure. You, you could be right. Are they different? You know, I think they're different. I think you're right. I think that's it. Let's do this. Let's put your name on this. Whoever you are with your chocolate egg. Oh, it's already gone. I don't know who it is. I'm sorry. Whoever you are, this is your piece. Thank you very much for speaking up. You will be remembered forever. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm being sarcastic. No, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's level four. That's three, that's four, that's three, that's two. We've got this one already. That's three, that's four, that's four and three. We're okay. This is clear now. I'm really not sure about these bottom ones, but, <clears throat> but, 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 I'm going to cheat. One of these bottom ones could actually be level two. That could be level one. This could be level two. But one, you can't see it. And two, the registration for the printers would be beyond belief difficult. So what I'm going to do, although it might not technically be right on this print, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this bottom corner as level one. This one's darker for sure. Got to cover that's level three. But I'm going to leave the bottom all as number one, which I think they could be. I'm not quite sure. And if we need a touch of depthness there, we will print a little bit of gradation in from the bottom on that one. We've been, I was talking to Sugasan about this, and she's like, please don't go there. Please don't go there. So I think we're going to do that this way. This one has to be carved. It's going to come on level three. And I suspect what we might do to cheat after we do this one on level three, with all its super fine details, we may then come back to the level one block and take it off. Don't tell anybody. Go to the lower left side of the print and hold there. Yeah, I told you, this is what I said. There are areas here which I think could be level two. And we're going to treat this corner a little bit differently. This line for sure is darker. That's level three. You can see the blue. This one could be level two, sliding in there. That's level one. This one, I think, is level two. But it comes out all the way. It would be this entire right-hand corner. So as I said, I think we're going to leave it at level one for now. We can easily add a little bit of depth if we need to add some depth at that corner. I think we are good to go. Speak now or forever hold your peace. dried off nicely and I want to take the opportunity just to check here. We put a pretty fair amount of water on this piece of paper and has it actually stayed stable or has it shrunk? Let's have a look here. We put a lot of water on that sheet of paper. How much has it changed in dimensions? Anything or nothing?
I am nervous about this. I really, really am nervous about this. The experience, you know, I am nervous about this. So excuse me for being a bit of a fuss budget here. I am really nervous about how much the dimensions of this sheet of paper may have changed. It looks okay here, here, here. This looks exactly right. This corner, I'm nervous about. Put in the registration marks. Peel this back. And that doesn't match. does it. I'm being a little bit nervous about nothing. It's really hard to, to show here. If I get this line straight, They do match, I guess. It's really, really, look at this. This is matching, that's matching. I'm gonna move right up to the very tip. I guess we're there. I think we're there, I think we're there. <laughs> Sorry for futzing around like this, but this is one of the most important parts of my job, and there's no way I can uh, I can ignore this. So just excuse me if it seems a bit fuss budgety. The more we fool around with this, oh, we're there. It's okay. I'm just fine. We're okay. Famous last words. We're okay. <clears throat> the more I fool around with this, the more I crease it, and bend it, and muck with it, and bang it in this corner, the more I do those things, the more trouble I'm going to get into. The last words of the captain of the Titanic.
So the, the movement this way or this way is irrelevant. We can always move it around. What we can't change later on is this. We have five Mome Gumpy here. Peelable Gumpy. Honey time. Last time we tried this, the block that you just saw me finish carving, we had a bit of an accident with the peel. I didn't get enough glue on there. I don't want to put too much glue on, you know. Too much glue is dangerous. It slips and slides and there's so much more chance of distortion when I'm rubbing it down if there's too much glue. Not enough glue and as you saw, there will be pieces that will pull up that won't get glued tightly enough. It's a, it's a tight balance. Last time round, when I was doing just at this stage, I must have missed one spot and it was just a bit too dry. Or I talked too much and I was, it dried out while I was chatting, I don't know. Oh, Ayano san is here, it's nine o'clock, nine o'clock. I can't chat right now, it's, it's difficult, 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 difficult work. How you doing? How's your hand, wrist? Says Dave, I can't chat right now. So Dave starts chatting. Just, just a minute. This is difficult, difficult. Hang on one second. Down, down. This is the most critical part of the entire woodblock printmaking job. Right there. Down, 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 down. Not stretching at the corners. Did we get it right? I don't know. We won't know until Sugasana, whoever starts test printing. You know, we carve all these blocks and right. Sugasana starts test printing and the blue like doesn't match up on the top right hand corner. And she's like, Dave, 
Come on. And I'm like, the chat disturbed me or something like this, whatever. Anyway, how are you doing? Now now I can talk to you. I don't know, uh, my, my fingers are still numb. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started taking a bath since yesterday. Started taking a bath since yesterday? You've never <laughs> had a bath before? <laughs> No, I used to take a bath like every night um, yep. when I was living with my parents. Yep. But uh, since I moved to Tokyo, you shower and stuff. Yeah, shower, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. So you're soaking now, and right, yeah, okay, okay. Right, right. Just back I should Give me a break. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? She actually said that. Come here in front of the camera and say that again. Give me a the break. Thing is, like, the thing is, like, I'm the one who always tell you, like, daily sign, combini food are not healthy, and you got to, you know, get more calories. You're not eating healthy, or, you know, you shouldn't drink this, you shouldn't eat that. I'm this kind of person, telling, like, everyone to be healthy. And I myself are eating healthy and drinking healthy, too. But I'm the one who gets sick. So I feel like I'm getting old. <laughs> I can't top this. I'll just keep quiet. <laughs> No, tell you what, I've got to do this. You want to take the computer for a minute and just you can you can watch the chat for a minute. Sit in as a guest for a minute here. I've really got to concentrate on this. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, I'm half I'm a, half up and half down here. Can we if, can we get that cable out of the way? If you just lift it, uh, no, don't don't unplug it. It's a camera. But are we okay? Hi, I think so. And then I'll move the mic. I'll put the mic so that it's again ha- halfway in between us here. I'll right. put the mic right there. Halfway I feel in between. I remember Welcome to our AMA. Mm-hmm. Hi. 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 <laughs> Took the backpack off my Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I started wearing. Uh, I should have talked to you, right? Talk to them. Say hello. I thought it was chilly, but then I started wearing down jacket. No, it's too hot. Hi, oh, hi, gozaimasu. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. Oh, hi, gozaimasu. I don't know what to do. Ah, the bike, the bike. I want to show you a picture of my new bike. Because last time, I heard everyone talking about, you know, what kind of bike I got. Jajan. So, this is what we call pissed bike. It's not, it's, it's not a drunk bike. It's not a drunk bike. And I saw someone say, like, uh, we all know that Tayano is a secret uh, street boxer. We do? I, this is good. I haven't heard this yet. Who did I hire? Uh, I don't because I always come in like you know, uh, you know, sore and shoulders and stuff. Oh. But I'm um, just um, when I start something new, I just do it excessively. I don't know where to stop, so I just try my best, try my best, try my best, and then just end up uh, getting hurt. No gears, no gears, right? It's not. <laughs> so, ato ne, mo ichimai arimasu kara. Kore. I myself call it kakui. Don't do this, kakui. You're here. I'm busy. I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> so, fix you like where it is. <laughs> so, 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 so. But then, I don't know if everyone knows, but uh, I have finger numbs. Uh, finger numb. Um, numbness in my fingertips. Numbness in my fingertip. Am I on the camera? I can't see the. Yes, you, you're in the visible? camera. Okay. Which is called. What is called in English? Carpal. Carpal tunnel syndrome? Is that what they're telling you you got? Yes, yes, that's what I got. 
So for some reason, from riding your bike. No, I think it's from bouldering. Or I hurt my 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 hand like three four weeks ago, and then after that I I went bouldering. So I think that's that's the reason why I got the, any finger numb in my finger. <laughs> yeah. So I went to I went to see a doctor like two weeks ago, and he said I have this the syndrome. Am I on camera? Just a minute. Sorry to interrupt you. Are we on camera? Yes. Well, maybe I want to focus on the, the thing that you're looking at. It looks okay. I'm, I'm fairly confident that we've got this transferred and down in the right place. Fairly confident. Mm. I'm not a thousand percent confident about this. There was a little bit, as we were looking at it and adjusting it, there was a little bit of thought that the top right corner here mm. was, it, it just seemed a little bit, a little bit off, you know. Usually it would be the far corner here. If the paper has shrunk or something, mm. that far corner would be in or if the paper had expanded but the far corner was bang on this corner was bang on here was okay but this top corner seemed to be a tiny little bit shriveled it wasn't lining up there here was okay but here was not mm -hmm. so I had two choices to cut and run to bail out and go back and start the whole thing all over again or to think about this that corner actually isn't going to be on this block we're going to cut this away huh. You know, the only after I finish carving here, the only thing that's going to be left is going to be this zone here and these things here. All the rest of this is coming off. This is going to be a completely dramatically different block from the one that they've just seen me do now. It's really only going to print this zone here. And if, 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 hopefully if it turned out that there had been a, a discrepancy here, mm -hmm. we have gaps. I mean, we could print, Sugasan could print this group by itself without right. putting pigment out here. Huh, huh. And she could then move the registration mark. If we turned out that we had some horrible misregistration, she could print this first, move the registration marks, and print this group next. And I, don't, I don't think, in any way, I don't think we're going that far. But uh, that's why that last little discrepancy, that tiny little shrink was on the corner, <coughs> it didn't make me, you know, like, bail out and run away. Mm -hmm. I think we're okay. But now, for carving this one, I no longer have any freedom. When I carve these white lines and these curves, when I carved them out of the first block, it didn't matter. I mean, we're obviously replicating the original, but it didn't matter. I could move my knife this way or this way. It wouldn't really matter as long as those curves looked like nice curves. But now, this one, there's no longer any freedom because this area has to match microscopically the one on the other block. So the block I'm going to carve now, this one, there's no longer any freedom whatsoever. As I come around her face here, I have to carve this one exactly to the edge of this one. Not back a bit, not forward a bit, not around a curve. This next one has to be one of the most exact jobs I have ever done, or will ever have to do. Okay, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Someone said, um, do you know that you are featured in an exhibition on ASMR in the Design Museum in London? Yes, they've asked ah. me for permission. This is actually, it's been extended and extended. They asked me for permission. I'm in the corner there that is uh, devoted to unintentional ASMR. Ah. And I didn't, I didn't ask for this. I didn't want to be part of this exhibition. They're using my Remembering a Carver video. And I guess it's just playing again and again and again and again and again in one corner of the exhibition. I think it's moved. It, well, it first was in, I believe, Stockholm, mm -mm. then it moved to London, and now it's been extended by popular demand. <laughs> so go ahead, right? so, no, I'm, not, I'm one tiny corner of it, and I'm in the corner that's the people that didn't want to be there. Ah, uh, so I mean, there are, there are most other people the, like you too. <coughs> no, there are a lot of YouTubers who try to do the ASMR right, right, thing. True, true. No, I don't, so I'm in the corner of what they call 
unintentional <laughs> ASMR. So I'm the guy who doesn't want to be there. Ah, uh, but I thought I, unintentional meant like um, you know you didn't mean you didn't mean to make ASMR. Yes, yeah, that's what it means. That's oh, that's what it means. What you, so okay, it's okay, unintentional okay. on my part. I see. I see. I see. So, so it's the thing. It's a big deal. Yeah. Oh, Akasaka-san is here. It looks like our day is getting charged up. What time is it? 9.08. Okay, we got a few minutes left before we get our show and tell out. Thanks for the help there, Anisan. Thank, Thank you. you. two more of these things and of course it's dry weather right now so what I'm going to do I'm not going to do it on the stream right now <clears throat> but as soon as the stream is finished and I got my cup of coffee I'm going upstairs going to get the next piece of wood and I'm going to get these two colored and pasted down because the longer I leave them like this out in the open air God knows what will happen to them and it's uh, we're in a time of the seasons when temperature changes up and down and up and down and up and down so these now have to be also processed and pasted down as soon as possible. That's my priority job this morning. No, absolutely no questions asked. It must be done this morning. Every minute, every hour we leave these things, the chance of swelling and shrinking is really, uh, really a thing. This is a big print, you know. I, I, in recent years, we've been making so many prints so small, I forget, you know, how critical, super critical it is when you're making larger prints to get this registration transfer done really, really carefully. I forget. Single, it's our single most critical job, period. Absolutely, singly, our most critical job. And uh, when I first came to Japan, <coughs> excuse me, I wasn't able to find a traditional teacher or whatever. I did spend a couple of months at the Yoshida workshop in Setagaya, what they used to call the Yoshida Academy. And those guys make big, big prints. The key blocks are metal, the color blocks are plywood, so they don't get block shrinkage. But how do they do their transfers? When you're making a print that's this big, how do you transfer the color without getting misregistration? Because when you're working that scale, even a you know 0.5 percent is going to end up being something visible. So what they use is they use plastic sheets. We've got a couple of minutes before show and tell. So maybe whatever, let's explain that. The Yoshida Studio, they've got a plywood base with a wooden corner, and there's a hinged frame at the back with a plastic mylar sheet. They get their key block. They get their metal key block, stick it in the corner, pachunk, pachunk. It's now blocked into the corner. They roll pigment on it, ink pigment. They roll ink on it, pull down the mylar cover, rub with the baron on the back of the mylar cover. That transfers the ink to the plastic. They lift it up, take out the key block, put in a blank color block, ka-chunk into the corner, drop the plastic back down, the ink now transfers again with the baron, the ink on the plastic transfers to the color block. So when you got to print this big and this big, you can still get away with your transfer. I don't know if they invented the technique or if they, you know, if they thought of it or just saw it somewhere or maybe it's a technique that's involved in some other craft, I don't know. It doesn't let you do super fine lines because blurring that ink and lifting it, blurring it and rubbing with the baron, it blurs things out. But they never did super fine detail. They did, you know, masses and masses of color. And I saw them do this. Hmm, interesting. I don't use it myself because I'm not working at that kind of a scale. But there it is. And it works. It works, it works, it works.
<laughs> we don't use any zip blocks here. We just use, what we do is we actually we make our own plastic bags. There's nothing we can buy in the grocery store that works for us. So we buy rolls of plastic. It's of a type that's used in agriculture. They use it to make greenhouses with. They buy like frames and then they roll plastic over these frames. It's a real heavy, thick plastic. We buy a rolls, we got a roll of it that's gonna last for 500 years. We got a roll of this stuff and we cut and tape it up to make our own plastic bags for keeping our paper in. It doesn't matter, just use whatever will hold the moisture. No, Yoshida didn't use water-based inks. Yoshida used a roller. I said it, he used a roller and uh, oil-based ink. <clears throat> That's how their printing is done for the key blocks. Their key blocks are metal. So for the most part, they're using ink, not pigment, for their key blocks. Although Numabisan does have a method of printing water-based ink on those metal blocks. He adds glycerin to the mix. He says semi-liquid glycerin. He puts that in the, in the bowl of pigment. And when you brush it over a metal block, it sort of sticks and it makes it usable. Where are we? We are up to Surimono album number three. For a recap, these are the albums David made 1999-2001-2003. From 1999 through 2003. I did 10 prints a year in what I called my Sudi Mono albums. <coughs> the idea being to teach myself as many different techniques about printmaking. Glycerin, it's not nitroglycerin, it's glycerin. <laughs> it's, I don't know. There must be a chemist here who can tell us what's going on. Please, do not, kids, do not try this at home. Go and buy nitroglycerin. I did not say that. Go and buy nitroglycerin and use it on your key blocks. That's the last thing I want. The police knocking at my door. This little boy blew himself up in a basement somewhere. <laughs> Do not try this at home. <laughs> glycerin, glycerin, it's in your drugstore. Okay, here we go. This is the beginning of the third year of the Surimono album series, and again, I, 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 I did what I shouldn't have done. I did what I'm criticizing people for doing, for biting off more than they can chew, trying stuff that is too difficult. But I couldn't resist. I wanted to make some of the most gorgeous prints that have ever been made. Stuff like this wasn't being done in that era. Nobody still is making this kind of reproduction. Nobody with any sense would take this on. I did. It's a print by, uh, I think it's Go Gose is the guy's name. Unknown print designer not famous. We've got our Utamaros, Hiroshige's, Hokusai's. This is Gosei, I believe. And it's spectacular. It's absolutely spectacular. Where do I start? Of course, you can see already, we have metallic pigments. The one you're seeing here is nickel silver. It's not silver and it's not aluminum. If I had used real silver, it would be black by now, but it doesn't have that cheap feel that aluminum has. It's powdered nickel silver. And another part on the gourd, this is a, it's a hyotan. It's a natural gourd which has been hollowed out. I mean, they're, they're hollow inside anyway, but it's been dried and, and finished on the inside. I've got no idea how they did it filled it with lacquer, poured it out, filled it with lacquer, poured it out. It's been turned into a container for sake. And what we're seeing here is the representation of a hanami party down at the Sumida River. There's a flask full of sake, there are cherry blossoms, and there are some small white fish, which I don't think they would have fished them out of the river. They would have been taken, taken down for the party. And the gourd has a metallic clasp at the top of it and that now has completely oxidized. I made this in the year 2000 and no, year 2001. So now it's a 20 odd years have passed, lots of uh, chance for this to oxidize and the uh, akakimpun, what's the, it's bronze, the bronze powder has oxidized. 
The lettering also was bronze powder and it would have been shiny like gold back at the beginning. Now it's oxidized to a dark color. There's two different what have they got here at the back? No, we don't. It's all... No, there is. There's Kimidashi. Okay. The bumpiness you see here, there's two techniques involved here. This is simply Karazuri. When we do Karazuri with the lines, you've seen we emboss a pattern in a block, rub it, and you see the embossed lines, like we do with the names on our prints. This is the same thing, but instead of carving somebody's name, we carved fish shapes. And the reason they are bumpy is because the fish area hasn't been touched, but the green area around it has been printed with extremely high vivid pressure. So the back of the paper is absolutely flat in this area, and the front is really, really bumpy. It looks absolutely like a bunch of white little fish sitting there on the paper. The cherries are a little bit different. They are not embossed, well, I guess they're debossed, and they are done by scooping out a wood block, carving a scoop in the block and pushing from the back side. It's going to be a bit difficult for me to show you here. I don't know if you can see. The cherry areas have been pushed out from the back. After the color was printed, there's a block with a depression carved into it, and the cherry shapes are pushed out from the back. This is called kime dashi. Very happy with this one. It was. It, this is a spectacular production. We've talked about this before too. The uh, shibori zome tie dye pattern. The block is a vermilion block carved that shape with small circles carved out of it. But each one of the circles has a dot left in the middle of it. I think we've had these patterns before, right? I try to show off how many did I not pop out. Where's my, where's my poker? What do you think? Did I get them all or did I pop out? Did I lose any of them? Yeah, I lost a couple. <laughs> you get the idea? To, to, to create this pattern, you have to carve away the vermilion, but you have to leave the dot in the middle of each one. I missed one there. There's a dot. Go back and do it again. <laughs> There's three or four off. I don't know how many are off. There's a few of them off. Give me a break. I was a young carver. I see two. I don't see three or four. Quoting Gummy, you're exaggerating. I see two. This print is now in our catalog. Not the copy I made, but one of our printers, Tsushima-san, out in Ome, she asked, can I have a go at this? And I didn't laugh out loud at her, but like, come on, come on, give me a break. And she said, no, seriously, I've got some time. I'd like to have a go at printing this. So she took my sample, took the blocks, and she did a really nice job. And this is, I believe, now back in our catalog. Number 61, I don't know, has somebody found it? Hang on a sec, let me go find a link here. I should have teed this up before I started the stream, sorry. There it is. It's catalog number 61. So this is actually available from us right now. Somebody's got the link. Okay, thank you. Lost for words. Thank you. Got your egg. And this is Tsushima-san, who was the first printer who came here to train back in 2011.
back then I was just I was trying to make reproductions of prints, stuff that people had never done before. It, you know, like Adachi or Takamisawa would never do this because it's just totally not commercially feasible to do it by their standards, you know. And also they would never have thought about it. So. But I did, I did it. Okay, one more before we sign off. Time for one more. It's a copy of a copy of a copy. The original of this, it's done by the Kai Getsudo school. It would have been done back in 1690 or somewhere around there. The era long, long before color printing had been invented. And it would have been way too big for me to show it here. It's, a, it's about, uh, about a meter tall was the original woodbuck print. And the woodbot prints in this group, the Kai Getsudo group, back at the very early beginnings of ukiyo-e, are about the rarest prints in the whole Japanese genre. For me to ever own one, <laughs> if, if one came up at auctions now, it would go like seven figures US, easily over a million dollars. There were so few of them made, so few have survived. They're the rarest, rarest, rarest of all Japanese prints. Rarer than the Great Wave. Great Wave is, is, is common by comparison. There's only like 13 or 14 of these things left on the planet. What we're seeing here is my reproduction of a Takamizawa reproduction in the Taisho era. Takamizawa shrunk this thing down, put it in one of their subscription sets, and out it went. And they made up their own colors to, to go on it. And I made a reproduction of their print. And the challenge on this one for me wasn't the, the cherry blossoms that you saw in the last one or whatever. The challenge on this one was the fact that the key block and her hair are the same block. The era we're talking about here was before hair blocks became multiples. The face and the hair are printed on the same block. You need good rich pigment and pressure to get a reasonable black on the hair and too much pigment and pressure will close the eyes and mouth and muck up your hairlines. This is tough, very, very tough. Separate black block for the kimono, but to put that on the hair wouldn't have worked. And again, look at this, the same idiotic pattern. What a glutton for punishment. Two months in a row, Dave chose a print with the same, the same pattern. What a glutton for punishment. Also, we have some pretty spectacularly small registration here with these color blocks. And we have another fun one. Crisscross lines. This is not two blocks, vertical and horizontal. These are carved on the same block. So the carver has to get in there and get out those little white dots, and the printer has to print this without getting pigment mixed in there. So this would have been one of the main challenges on this print too. It was a wonderful ten years of uh, five years of work, you know. Absolutely wonderful five years of work. They all got my Baron embossment, which is negative on the front and positive on the back because it's pushed in and squeezed out. Is this one in the catalog? I don't know, you know, I think it's just so difficult to print and get good clean copies. I don't think it's in our catalog. I don't remember. I don't remember. Just a sec. Let me, let me quickly jump back. Oh, yeah, it is. Okay, it is in our catalog. It's number 65. The current copies we have, I don't know who printed it. So we do have it.
fun. Those were years of fun. Really, really years of spectacular challenge for me to go through that series. 50 prints. What's coming tomorrow? Oh, tomorrow's a good one. There's a story. That, not tomorrow, the next stream. The next one we see coming up. There's a good, good, good story for it and a spectacular thing to show you. That'll be fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I got to get out of here. I have really now, I've got to get those things pasted down before another minute goes by. Thanks very much. It's Thursday morning. I'll see you two days from now, Saturday morning. Things are really cooking now. Things are moving very quickly at Moko Hong Kong. New people coming on board, interviewing again yesterday, all kinds of stuff happening. With the mailing we put out last week, ayano san is flooded with orders. If you did order a print in the last couple of days, please wait. She's digging through the pile, answering everybody as fast as she can. So just hold on, please. That's the reason we did this early, to make sure those gift prints could get out in time. They will, but just hang on for a couple of days before she replies to you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a couple of days. Exhausted, but very, very happy. Things are going very well for us. Thanks for your cooperation. Thanks for your friendship. See you on Saturday morning. What's the forecast? Sunny all day today? I think so. Yeah. so. Okay, let's sign up. Bye for now. Thanks again. <laughs>